trials and tribulations of being a single parent. My next guest knows that journey all too well. She became a single mama of two when she was just 25 years old. But like all of us, she figured out a way to pull it off. In fact, she's now a school principal and the founder of a Philadelphia area nonprofit that helps single moms ease their way off public assistance so they can be proud mamas all on their own. And that makes her a rad human. All right, from Empowering Single Moms, Inc., let's say hi to Dr. Crystal Edwards. Does it matter if you have an honorary doctor? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Listen, I, you can have that. I, I like mean, you did the work somewhere. I, I did that five minutes work. <laughs> okay. I walked across the I state. did that five minutes. Oh my gosh. Well, wait, take us Listen. back to the beginning because what were those early days of sing single parent life like for you? It had to be hard. Oh, they were hell and traumatic. Yeah. Um, so those are two really good descriptions. Yes, yeah. because that's just that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, and it was also a little bit of grace and mercy. So um, I think that we tend to be our, our heaviest critic when we're in that. Mm. So um, I looked up and, you know, I was no, I was in a, a separated uh, a marriage at the time and I had a three and a five year old mm. and I had to show up for them. It's hard because you're blindsided. You didn't see this type of thing coming, but you have to deal with it because now it's your reality. But um, really through prayer, it allowed me to be able to, to open up and get through the years of the hurt and the pain. And what happens, and this is something that I've seen happen with uh, single mothers that, that I've worked with, when we aren't open and communicating and when we're hurting, because there was no therapy like really back then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we, when we do those things, we'll wind up with more children because we've entangled ourselves. Entangled, that's how Entanglement, we know that. We will <laughs> entangle ourselves, okay, in other relationships. Hmm. So by the time um, 2004 came around, I had four children. Hmm. And I said, you, this, you gotta deal with that pain. Yeah. Okay, because pain will keep you confined mm -hmm. and it'll keep you Trapping. trapped up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that's one of the main things I work on with, um, with our women of empowering single moms is dealing with that pain because pain will blindside you and you will have more children thinking that you just want to be loved. You just want to have that security again. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get that when you're broken. Because what I know is that half a man you. will attract half a woman and vice versa. And nobody's holding either. Oh, sh Come on now, Kelly. Okay? Man, I'm so glad you... That was it. That honey, you said children, honey. I was like, you can come home with other things, too. You yeah, half, you can come home with other things. Half okay. a man will attract, attract half, half a, a woman, woman. Yep. all the time. Because the Where's, very thing wow. that you are lacking is the very same thing that you are seeking in someone else. And if they're broken, the very same thing they're lacking, they're seeking in you. All Ooh. I needed was this moment, not tons of therapy. <laughs> that no, was right. amazing. Yeah. No um, charge. No, no, that was great. I, no I like it, I like no it. Charge. Well, tell us about creating Empowering Single Moms. Why'd you do this? Um, and I'm going to tell you when that really was in me to do that is when I looked at this newborn I had, uh, Zion Ishmael, uh, is my baby boy, and I was in the hospital. He was just born, and I said, you got to do this thing differently because you, you, you got to deal with you. These children are beautiful. Of course, you're going to give them the best lives you can. You're going to intermingle with their, with, with their father. But, girl, you got to get it together. Mm. So as I started doing my self-work, I started then talking and helping other women because the one thing I knew is that I was going to live this life and had lived this life, mm. I was going to make damn sure another woman didn't have to go through it. Yeah, and, and that not was alone. My thing. I, yeah. it, you're not going to have to do this yeah. alone because I'm going to be here for you like I didn't have. Now, I had my girls who were able to, um, you know, watch my children when I, because I had a tight schedule. Mm -hmm. You don't have no free time in this work. Yeah. Okay? Everything was, it was regimented, right? Um, but I started putting little bags together. Of uh, gently used clothes, a few pampers that my son didn't need, even my um, my older children, and you know clothes that were professional I could no longer use, and going out and networking with women who needed, mm. who needed to be heard, 
who needed a word to get them together. And from that, that's where Empowering Single Moms. So I created a network. I started mentoring, you know, there were little tangible items to get them through that other people take for granted. Yeah. But how did you find the women? How did you know who was in need? Huh, you, listen, because you can feel a broke spirit from where you've been broken. It's like a surge. Wow. You know, you, and you just start talking and you would, you would hear just how pe even at your job. Okay, it, and that's just way it just got around word of mouth. Everybody, welcome Sydney. Yeah. Hi, Sydney. Yeah. So, how did you meet Crystal? Um, so, I had just gotten out in a healthy relationship, and I have three kids, mm -hmm. um, and we didn't have a house or a car to call our own, so I was on public transportation. Um, and then my sister actually knows Crystal, so she introduced me to her. And because of COVID, I was able to meet with her virtually and I learned how to manage money. And Crystal really just uplifted me. She helped me with the legal things that I had to do because I had no idea what I was going to have to do to protect me and my children. Hmm. Um, and she walked me through all of that. So, um, and she never, she always would tell me like, don't let them tell you no, whatever you need, go get it and get it done. Um, and she really put a lot of confidence in me to, want, to, to understand like, it's okay to be a single mom. Um, Cause when I was in the relationship, I always wanted to be a good mom. Um, but I just felt like I couldn't really fulfill that. And she really taught me that, like, you were that person the whole time. Just because you didn't see it, it was in me the whole time. And she just always saw that in me. Um, and That's just invaluable. always uplifted me, yes. And yeah. just uplifted me. And you're into mentoring women, Kim, right? So yes, how, 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 absolutely. Do you get so much joy from that? I, so much joy, just joy even listening to this and, and, and finding out her story and how she helped. And that's why I wanted to know how did you find, uh, find her? And it is true, women, we, we do connect and, and some women are afraid, it's not COVID, but it's, if you see a spirit and you see they're broken or they need help, even if people are weird, you just always say, hey, uh, can I help you with anything? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just want a stranger to say, are you okay? That's and right. you're like, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, you never know what it will open up. Yeah. See, see That's right. Me. So what, is, what does your life look like today? Okay, so um, I just gonna say, Crystal really changed my 2021. Like, um, so I haven't been out of school for 10 years because I had my daughter and I wasn't able to finish. Mm. Um, and I actually got money to go back to school, but I needed another $600. And Crystal um, and Empowering Single Moms gave me the $600. And so in August of 2022, I'll be a college graduate. From where, though? At from Temple from University. From Temple University. Yes. Yes. <laughs> in public health, yes. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so I'll be able to support me and my kids, and I won't have to worry about being on anybody's anything anymore. It'll just be me and my kids, and I'm oh, wow. looking forward she to that She will stay so in our network. Yes. Because now she has to pay it forward, because yeah. there's some Sydney's out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, and there's she, everybody I, out here. I think everybody thinks that you're invincible and it can never happen to you. Yes. You have yeah. no idea. I didn't think I would end up divorced. I didn't think I'd end up a single no, mom. Nobody, nobody plans that. Like, and you know nobody plans on being a single mother. Mm -mm. No, that's what I'm saying. Nobody really plans I have that. Yet, in this work, I have yet to meet one mother that has come and said, oh, she, I can sit right beside you. She adopted. No, no, <laughs> like, no you know. No, She's like, actually, like, they don't, we don't have moms who show up and look like, oh no, I just wanted to lay up and I had these babies. So that, no, absolutely. that's not what they're, they're like. Listen, I want to have a better career. I don't want to have to report my income every year to recertify, to live in this rat infested place. Like absolutely. we, we, and so I go into HUD with moms and say, hey, um, this apartment is uh, this apartment is not up to code. This house is not up to code. Mm. They need to help. They they need support and they want to thrive. And that's what we are here for. And I believe in empowering single moms so so much. We don't we don't have a funding stream. That funding stream is ten percent of my salary mm -hmm. because wow. I give to empowering single moms every month. Yeah. Okay, I pay the storage bill. Mm -hmm. I pay for the, the, the van gas, mm -hmm. okay? Um, those things like that. If a mom needs something immediately or we don't have it in the stores because we have a great relationship with a retail group who gives us things, um, I'm going out and buying it yeah. because they're in need. And I have to be what I didn't have.
and yes. that, that is the wow. ministry. Of Write God. that book. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to be what you didn't have. I love that. Well, Dr. Dr. Crystal Edwards, you are doing amazing things, and we want you to continue doing more. Um, so, Third Love, makers of the most comfortable and half cup size bras, underwear, loungewear, and activewear, is one of the leading donors of undergarments in the U.S., donating over $50 million to date. That's amazing. Um, they love the work that you're doing to empower women, so they're going to donate $10,000 to your foundation. $5,000 in product, which you talked about, like bras, undergarments, that kind of stuff really is very important. So $5,000 of product as well. 